My father was uh, Dave Balaban. He worked for Balaban and 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 uh, Katz uh, on on a State Street in the Chicago Theater Building in Chicago. And uh, basically, I believe that he was uh, he was the uh, district uh, manager for a whole group of, of theaters on the north side of Chicago. And uh, he was in charge of kind of overseeing those theaters. Well, the most important was when we were kids and went to California in 1933. And my brother and I were very angry because the World's Fair was opening here and we had to go off to that awful California. But uh, when we got there, uh, Sam and my dad were very good friends, and we went to uh, we went to the studio MGM, and we got a grand tour of the whole studio. Sam took us all around, not somebody else. We got to meet a lot of the actors and actresses, and we saw them filming. We saw them rehearsing. Probably my mother and dad saw more of Sam, but we were kids, so we were not involved with anything they did at night. So. I really don't know much about that. Sam had a wonderful sense of humor. Um, he was always full of some jokes. Um, my grandmother was a very small woman, Goldie. And apparently my father and all the boys were just devoted to her. She had been the really, you know, sort of carried the family and taught everybody and pushed everybody. And she was really the get up and go person. She had run the store, you know, the, the fish and produce market that they had in, in the ghetto in Maxwell Street and all of that. And she's the one who had, had seen, you know, found movies. And you know that story, I'm sure, about her coming and saying to my father, you've got to come and see this, Barney. This is incredible. She had a Jewish accent. You know, this is so incredible, Barney. You've got to come see this business. You've got to go into this business either way. So they're riding over on a trolley car to see this you know, storefront kind of first movie theater. And he says, why is this such a great business, Mom? And she said, because here they pay the money and then if they don't like it, it's too bad, they already paid. Because she was used to, you know, a fish and produce market where they came and they, you know, they, they you know, pushed their fingers in all the fruit and they left dents and then they said, no, I don't want it, you know. Or they bought it and didn't pay the bill. Well, she thought any business where they plunk the money down and that's the end of it was like, you know, her idea of heaven. Yeah. Adolf Zucker and Barney Balaban had a tremendously close affiliation. Barney Balaban was in New York where the money came from and where the headquarters was and they had 1501 Broadway was the head of Paramount Pictures, the Paramount Building, and the Paramount Theater was part of that, that building. From the time I was a little kid, my dad used to talk about the theaters and he used to take me to them. Uh, the first one I remember is the Tivoli, which was one of the first ones in the company, I think, and was not so far from where we lived. It was very beautiful, it was well known. They had gorgeous stage shows there, as did all the theaters in those days. And, you know, they were full of marble and gorgeous things around and so on. I was always impressed. I always got a sort of a kick out of it. And. Uh, I used to go to all the theaters with him. In fact, when I was a little bit older, if I was a good girl on a certain evening when he would go around and visit the theaters and talk to the managers and check up and so forth, I used to go and visit all of them. One of the most gorgeous was the South Town. Uh, it had a marble swimming pool in the lobby with swans in it, for heaven's sake. There was a uh a sense with uh, the Balvin and Katz firm to view the properties as a group and they did institutional advertising wherein they promoted the theaters of Balvin and Katz as opposed to the theaters individually and they created what now is called brand name recognition for their theaters. If you saw a Balvin and Katz name above a theater's label you had a certain level of expectation, which they certainly built and developed on with their institutional ads that were uh, primarily in the print media, and they employed some fine artists, notably one man by the name of Sessions, who did beautiful institutional ads that were subsequently borrowed from Chicago and run all across the country later for various Paramount theaters. I mentioned earlier that it, 
it gets into your dreams. And I, I say that not of my own accord. I, I can't remember the last time I dreamed of it. But those who tour it or those who've worked there often report that it's in their dreams and that it doesn't go away. And it's not a haunting. It's, it's just a feeling. There's, there's really nothing like the interiors of the Uptown and the impact it has on you, how it makes you feel to walk through that grand of space. Well, I wasn't aware of orchestras at the time. I uh, do remember, probably in 1935, whatever it was released, being dragged on a sled down to the, from uptown where my folks lived on, on Lakeshore, down to the Chicago Theater to see the opening of uh, Midsummer Night's Dream. I remember that. Uh, when I was downtown, we had the sh well, we had the Chicago. Across the street was the State and Lake, and then around the corner was the Oriental the United Artists, the Roosevelt Theater, the Michael, Ta uh, the Michael Todd Theater, the Woods Theater, the Cinestage Theater. Uh, there were more theater seats in downtown Chicago's Loop than all of New York. Well, they were both born in Chicago. Both mother and daddy were born in Chicago in 1889. And they lived on the south side of Chicago both of them grew up there. In fact, they went to school together. They were in the eighth grade together. Uh, but then they parted ways. In those days, if your family didn't have money, as theirs didn't, uh, you were lucky to go up to the eighth grade. From the eighth grade on, you went to work. That was usually 13, 14. Unless, like Barney, you were the oldest in the family, he was allowed to go to night school to continue his education while he held a day job. My father went into a, uh, um, a woolen store, a man, people who sold woolens, and he used to move large things of wool back and forth. So I took English literature, and Uncle Sam always thought I was a communist because I wasn't interested in business. I was interested in literature and uh, uh, Karl Marx was an important man in those days. And uh, however, as I got a little older, he could get me a nice, by that time, he had left Paramount and uh, joined Metro, Goldwyn Mayer, and was sort of a, a producer of musicals there and lived very uh, luxuriously in Bel, Bel Air. And uh, he got me a job at, a, uh, at Metro-Golden-Mayer in the uh, short subjects department. Mm -hmm. 